This video is brought to you by myvayteaching.com. Small intestine. The small intestine is a very long tube. It is about 7.5 meters long. Though small intestine is very long, still it is called small intestine because it is quite narrow tube. You can see it is quite narrow here. In the picture it is clear. The small intestine is arranged in the form of a coil in our belly. The small intestine is also the site of complete digestion of food and also the absorption of digested food. Let us see how it is connected with the complete digestion of food. What happens is that the partially digested food from stomach comes into the small intestine. Now the small intestine receives secretion of the digestive juices from the liver and the pancreas. So liver and the pancreas send their juices to the small intestine. What are the juices that they secrete? Liver secretes bile juice while the pancreas secrete pancreatic juice. Bile juice plays an important role in digestion of fats. The pancreatic juice digests fats, leftover starch and any leftover proteins in the food. After digestion, our fats are converted to, our fats gets converted to the simpler molecules called fatty acids. Starch is converted to glucose and the proteins are converted to amino acids. Here the small intestine also releases certain juices which are called intestinal juices. Or the intestine juice. What is the function of this juice? This juice breaks down starch carbohydrates, these starts into glucose and the proteins into amino acids. In this way, our food breaks down completely into very small water soluble substances like glucose, fatty acids, glycerols and amino acids. This is called digested food. We have named glycerols. Here we should have mentioned that fats are broken down into fatty acids and glycerols. So this will remove any confusion that you may have when we talked about glycerols. Now the next step takes place that is the absorption of the digested food in the small intestine. The digested food can now pass into the blood vessel in the walls of the small intestine. This process is called absorption. The small intestine is specially adapted for absorbing the digested food. This happens as follows. The inner surface of the small intestine has millions of tiny finger like outgrowths which are called villi. We should remember the word 
will have. And these are nothing but the finger like outgrowths inside the small intestine. What is the role of these villi? They increase the surface area of the small intestine. The surface of the villi absorbs the digested food material into the blood flowing through them and this blood carries the absorbed food material into the cells in all the parts of the body. In the cells, this food is used for energy, growth and repair. This is called assimilation. But now, a part of the food which we had eaten cannot be digested by our body. The food that remains undigested and unabsorbed passes from the small intestine to the large intestine. Large intestine is about 1.5 meters long. It is called large intestine because it is quite wide. You can see in the picture as compared to the small intestine. The undigested and unabsorbed food from the small intestine enters into the large intestine. The large intestine absorbs most of the water from the undigested food material. Now due to the removal of this water, the undigested food becomes semi-solid and this undigested food is stored in the last part of the large intestine which is called the rectum for some time. When we go to the toilet, the undigested semi-solid waste is passed from our body through anus in the form of feces. This process is called ejection.